With that down, let's move on to main topic number two. And our second main topic today gets submitted into us by Jack Drees, who writes, I know over the past couple of years, you have constantly talked about movie pass, and I enjoyed your discussions on the company, even if you thought you were talking about them too much. As of January 28th, Helios and Matheson, that is the parent company that owns movie pass, their parent company filed for bankruptcy. What are your thoughts? All right. So it looks like it's finally over. It's finally 100% done. Movie Pass is no more. Uh, this comes to us from CNN. The curtain has come down on Movie Pass after the company filed for bankruptcy protection on Tuesday. The company said in a regulatory filing on Wednesday that it considered strategic alternatives but couldn't find any. Helios and Matheson, Movie Pass's parent company, also filed for bankruptcy this week. Both businesses will liquidate their access or their assets. Helios and Matheson's stock which was once worth $5,100 a share adjusted for stock splits is now at zero is now at zero. Now, of course, there have been many times that we've talked about the impending doom of movie pass. And I'll be honest with you. I was surprised that movie pass even made it in to 2019, but it did. They hung on there, and even back in November when it looked like they were shutting down operations, they're saying, ah, we'll be back, though. We're just restructuring and re-everything. But now it is 100% done. Movie Pass is liquidating their assets. They are no more. And all I can say is it's about time. It's about time. Now, look, I never want to be one of these people that doesn't try to cheer for, for business ideas to make things work, to, to have a, to have a neat idea and to get out there and succeed. Movie Pass did something once Helios and Matheson took them over. They did this really aggressive thing where they went from like $40 a month membership to $10 a month for unlimited movies. And it shocked the world. And I remember all of a sudden, this can't possibly last. But okay, and I signed up for it and we all signed up for it. And I, I never not want to cheer the idea of ingenuity, of new business, especially when it's groundbreaking. I mean, let's face it, though, Movie Pass is not the company that invented the idea of movie subscription services. Cineworld in the UK did it a decade ago. So there's that. But they did cause a massive stir when they did this. And you wanted to cheer for them at first, and you wanted them to work like I did at first. The problem, of course, became the fact that that their business plan became apparent and their business plan was that of a mafia. Mm -hmm. They wanted their whole business plan was built on the concept of extortion. Here was movie passes grand plan as it became apparent as time went on. Their grand plan was this. They knew that a $10 a month subscription service could not survive. They knew that. But that wasn't their plan. Their plan wasn't to survive on $10 a month subscription services. Their plan was at such a low price point for the promise of unlimited movies anytime you wanted, well, you know, one movie a day, that they would get so many subscribers that would sign up, and they did, they got millions, so many subscribers that would sign up and become reliant on their service that they could then use that subscriber base to go and extort and blackmail movie studios and movie theater chains into forcing them to cut movie pass in on their action. One of the biggest examples of this, of course, was that they wanted AMC theaters to give them a percentage of their concession stand sales. They were basically like an old mob movie, Aaron, going, you know, I see you're making a lot of money on uh, people coming to your movies. It'd be a shame, you know, if uh, suddenly we didn't allow our subscribers to come to your AMC theaters. Right. How about we make sure that doesn't happen by you kicking us a little bit of your popcorn money? To which AMC was, fuck off. Mm -hmm. That was AMC's response to them. And at first, a lot of the fans were like, oh, AMC, why won't you work with them? They're giving us such a great... And then it became apparent and what a ridiculous ask it was. Then, I'll never forget this one. There was a weekend where the Jennifer Lawrence movie, uh, Red Sparrow was coming out. Mm -hmm. It was 
just so happened to be opening up on the same weekend as the Bruce Willis remake of Death Wish. Mm -hmm. The oh. studio mm -hmm. that behind Death Wish bought advertising on the Movie Pass app. So when you would open up Movie Pass, you'd see advertisements for Death Wish. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But just then, coincidentally, movie, and I remember this was me. I tried to use my movie pass to go see Red Sparrow that weekend and get guess what the one movie was that my movie pass would not allow me to go see that weekend. Red Sparrow? <laughs> Red Sparrow. That's funny. Isn't that hmm. strange how that worked? And then, of course, they started reducing their services and blah, blah, blah. It's just that I cannot help but cheer. When a company who bases its entire business practice on the idea of extortion falls and fails. And now we have companies like AMC who were able to study the stupid things that MoviePass was doing and study the great things Cineworld was doing and saying, we're going to come up with a plan that works. Now, see, a lot of people then say, how does Regal then do one even at 30 bucks a month? Or how does AMC do it at 21 bucks a month? How is that possible? Here's why it's possible. Because it's people coming into their theaters, and when they come into their theaters, they're buying their soda and their popcorn, and their th and it's just, they're making money everywhere. The movie studios are getting more people coming into the theaters. It is a win for everybody. It was a great structure. It's just something well, that MoviePass couldn't make work. Also, think about the markup of popcorn. Oh yeah. I mean, like how like go next time you're at the grocery store, just go to the popcorn and the snack aisle and look at how much it costs to buy a huge thing of popcorn kernels. And then imagine how many popcorn kernels are actually popped in one thing of popcorn that you buy at the movie theater. And then look at how much that costs. I mean, you 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 are the king of buying popcorn. Yes, I am. <laughs> how much is a uh, like a regular thing of popcorn? Where I go about eight bucks. Eight dollars. That's probably 30 cents worth of kernels. The markup is incredible. Yes. And soda, oh my God, the syrup is so cheap. So yeah, that's where, that's where the money's at. Yeah, because the, 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 what a lot of people always forget is that movie theaters, they really don't make any money from the movie tickets. No. The studios and the distributors take most of it. Well, that's just like the car industry. Yes. Yes. So like I got a friends and family discount for our Dodge Challenger because we are a Dodge family. <laughs> and um, and I was shocked. I was like, this is not much. of." And they said, this is the discount that we give to the dealership. Like the dealership will make no money on the sale of this car, but they make the money in the oil changes. Yeah. And, and the, build, the upgrades. All, the, yeah. yeah. It's all in the details. So the thing is, though, I remember at CinemaCon one year, which is the big event where all the movie theater owners across North America. America get together every year. I love CinemaCon. I go there every year. Um, I remember once one of the heads of CinemaCon was on stage and he said something very poignant. You guys have probably heard me say this before, but he said this, we, as movie theater owners, he was saying, we are not in the movie business. We're in the candy business. Hmm. And it's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where they make their money. So I've honestly never really held it too much against the theaters for the market because that's the only way they keep the lights sure, on. Sure, absolutely. But it is a big market. But see, that's the thing. AMC and Regal, they know that if they can create a plan that gets people into the theaters, they'll make whatever money they lose on the movie ticket stuff. They'll absolutely. make that up in the concession sales stuff. So it's a model that works for them. It could not work for Movie Pass. Aaron... I know you were probably just as excited as anybody else when like Movie Pass comes out. And it's like something that was forty five dollars now, ten dollars a month. Go to a movie every single day, no restrictions. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Did you or Tom sign up for this thing at any point, or and what do you think about the demise of it right now? Well, you know, I I also think that another thing that they did was they they took into consideration the gym membership uh, yes. sort of plan where they go. Yeah, we'll offer a gym membership. We'll waive your initiation fee, which is always so stupid anyway. I'm like, I'm never paying initiation fee. It's the dumbest thing ever. But they assume everybody will sign up for the gym, but very few people will actually use that membership. So it's all going to even out in the end. What they didn't take into account is that people are lazy. <laughs> Nobody wants to go to the gym. Nobody enjoys going to the gym. But if you can have people just go and sit on their big fat butts and watch a movie, people will do that all day, every day. So that was a big mistake right there. Um, <laughs> you know, but also, and the thing about it is, uh, while yes, uh, I, well, 
I don't have a lot of sympathy for Movie Pass, the people at Movie Pass who clearly just did not make strong business decisions, clearly were in way over their heads, clearly were using, as you said, extortion techniques and blackmail and 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 just not very um, not very business friendly moves to try to take over an industry that clearly they were not a part of, but. I actually do feel a little bit bad for Helios and Matheson because this is a company, you know, their parent company, they were not formed for MoviePass. They started in 1983. You know, they had their first IPO, their initial public offering in 97. This is a company that has been around for almost four decades. And in at some point, they found MoviePass and were like, oh my God, this is the thing. And yes, it caused their stocks to skyrocket. Ultimately, what their plan was, was to uh, sell data. Yeah, and, and they it, should have yeah. done it as soon as possible. When all those millions of people signed up and they had all that data on all those subscribers, they should have sold that data immediately. But unfortunately, our buddy Mark Zuckerberg testified with the whole Facebook and Cambridge Analytica scandal. And every, all of a sudden, data was off limits. Can't sell anybody's data. Everything's private. It's got to be a big thing. Prior to that, data was free reign. Like you, you sign up for something, you click that box, you don't read what it says. They got your data. They could have, like Helios and Matheson could have done very well had they jumped on selling the data as soon as possible. But then as all of a sudden, movie pass started going down, losing millions per month. Yeah. Like it was just an Avalanche. They were burning cash like firecrackers. Oh I mean, my it, god, it was it, awful. And you know, and, and I don't know if they just didn't see what was down the road, and they figured. I, I don't know when it all happened exactly as far as when the Cambridge Analytica issue came out and they all of a sudden realized we're not going to be able to sell but this like data. Google and stuff like that, they still do it. Like Google still does, you know, they get certain amounts of personal data, all that kind of stuff. But it's just that... But even then, the whole the whole claim they made that, oh, we're going to utilize data and leverage, like, that's not going to make you the amount of money you're going to burn through giving three million people right. a movie a day. But I also think that Helios and Matheson made a, a, a tragic misstep, which is they put all of their eggs in one basket. Yeah. You know, like, why when you had, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you're never as popular as when everybody, you're, you're, nobody likes you until everybody likes you. That's what I always use in Hollywood. It's like nobody wants to hire you until every, all of a sudden everybody wants to hire you. You know, I I couldn't I could not get arrested. I booked a couple episodes of Mad Men and then all of a sudden everybody was like my agent said, "Oh my god, like Mad Men changed everything. The phone won't stop ringing." I'm like, "Great." Um so I feel like they should have taken the initial excitement of Movie Pass and used that to purchase another company that could have kept at least Helios and Helios and Matheson afloat. And I'm and if anybody wants to buy my Helios and Matheson stock, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't. Think or that. or what they should have done is they should have cut bait as soon as they saw the trend going down. But sure. either way, guys. It is kind of the end of an era. I mean, the, the movie passing was a big deal. How are you feeling about this? That the tombstone has finally been planted. Jump down into the comments section below and let me know your thoughts. All right.